hello everybody and welcome back to my channel this is Carmen with elemental designs here and today i'm just going to bring you guys another art journal page i've really been enjoying uh creating these art journal pages lately um sometimes i get into these modes of just wanting to create uh you know art journal pages um instead of creating like actual mixed media canvases and things like that uh, it allows me to kind of get my creativity uh, kind of flowing and going and as well as experiment with different kinds of mediums and just art products um, and art supplies and things like that so what i'm doing or what i've done actually is i've gessoed this page and again i'm using deco art products um the deco the deco art gesso and i'm using now uh, deco art media fluid acrylics um, and i am using them in, in the colors of cadmium red hue cobalt teal hue primary yellow as well as titanium white and these are fluid acrylics that are very, um, very loose. Uh, they're not as thick as the regular acrylics that you purchase. Um, they come in smaller bottles um, and they're very easily spreadable. And they also blend very easily as well. And I love using these products um, because they behave, they can behave similar to watercolor. Um, and if you add a little bit of paint and actually spray like water and things like that, it flows very easily uh, through your project um, to achieve the desired looks and effects. So here what you see me doing is just adding a whole bunch of different layers of paints um, and I went in one direction and now I'm going in another direction um, and this is all just to get some kind of texture going on in the background just uh, make it look like something is happening that we have all different kinds of lights in the background. And I do apologize for the glare. Um, I've put this lighting in four different places and no matter what I do I still get that glare so I do apologize for that. Um, and here, this is like Dollar Tree stencils. So don't feel that you have to go out and purchase like these really, really expensive stencils. If you have a Dollar Tree by you, um, you know, and, and you don't see them, ask somebody. They might be in a spot that you're unaware of. I know that a lot of the times I find these stencils behind other things. Um, and so I always, you know, make an effort to kind of look behind, look towards the end of, of you know, the little racks, the little stacks that they have. Because sometimes they'll be hiding back there. Um, so definitely ask them if they have them, if they're coming, you know, what's the case? Uh, cause for a dollar, you guys look how beautiful. I mean, you can't go wrong for a dollar, right? Um, so I just added some flourishes there. Now I'm just going to create some texture to the background of the page because I didn't want it to be just so bland with, uh, just these colors kind of happening. So I use this little dotted, um, kind of stamp and here I'm going to add a little bit of text. Um, and just, I'm just looking for stamps and using stamps that have some kind of texture to them. They have uh, some kind of interesting little things happening here and there. I'm also going to be using some stamps by Prima and these are like border stamps. Um, and I'm going to be using a set of bows, like hair bows. Um, and I'm going to be using that as well as one that has like scalloped edges that I'm going to be using to give, uh, my whole, uh, layout a frame. I'm going to use it all along the edges. And that one has um, scalloped edges, but it also has like text inside of uh, each of the little spaces. Um, so it's really cool. And um, I'm actually going to go into this whole thing. And after I've done all of this, I'm going to darken all of these uh, little borders up uh, with some markers. And I say some markers because I actually tried a different couple of them. Uh, just trying to see which one was the one that worked the best for me. I've worn out my supplies, you guys, <laughs> which is not a bad thing. They've been very, very heavily loved. Um, and a lot of the things that I have, like marker wise and things like that, I've had them since last year um, and they're still kicking. So, and I use them quite often. So they're, you know, it, it says a lot about the products themselves, um, especially like these, the fabric castells. Um, I've had those for quite some time and they're still, they're still going. They're very, very good uh, uh, markers and they're not that expensive either. <laughs> I know, um, when I do my shopping online, uh, sometimes I get the pack of uh, a pack of them um, for like under 12 bucks. So, you know, it all depends on where you go. Um, you know, and if you have, if you find them in your, in your local art supply stores and you can use a coupon, then by all means go ahead and do, do so because they're definitely worth uh, the money. They don't react to water. They don't react to anything. Once they're on, they're on. Um, and sometimes you need that when working in these types of, uh, you know, journaling environments, just because you use paint, you use water, you use all different kinds of wet, uh, mediums and stuff like that. So this is one of those, uh, little darlings stamps, uh, that were on sale last year that everybody was going crazy for. Um, they were going for like a dollar. 
Uh, she is sitting on a little tree trunk and she has a flute in her hand. And she's got this little bird off to the side, but I end up not using the bird. And I am using my own little handmade stamping tool, which you guys have seen me use over and over and over again. Um, and I've just been in this mode of using up my stamps and just playing with my stamps um, and, and doing like collaging type of work. Um, sometimes you don't have to buy those magazines. You know, if you have uh, these kinds of uh, stamps and stuff like that, you can always use these. The same way that you would stamp them and, you know, trim it out for, you know, a card and stuff like that. You can definitely do that and apply it to an art journal page. Um, so, you know, this is something that I, I've been enjoying doing lately which is why you guys have seen already a couple of layouts where I'm stamping and, um, you know, doing some fuzzy cutting and just kind of laying them out and just painting them with either watercolors or, you know, you can even water down your acrylics. If you have acrylic paints and paint them, you can paint them with pencils, with markers. I mean, you can pretty much use so, so many things, um, you know, to color them in with. So especially if you put them on cardstock and the cardstock that I'm using is a Nina White cardstock and I buy them by the ream of 250 um for let me see the last order that i placed um i i purchased 500 of them so two packs and i i think i paid like 18 bucks for the two packs together now if you're on amazon or you're one of those stores that you know you have exclusive deals then you might be able to get them for cheaper but this is 110 pound cardstock so it's really really good cardstock um for all different kinds of you know projects and stuff like that so so I did go ahead and just kind of trim the little birdie off, but again, I didn't use it because um, I am going to be using other birds for this project. So these are the leftovers um, of my napkins from the other day that I was doing uh, the little uh, art journal page with the three houses. So I'm going to decoupage these and um, again, just laying a little bit of thin glue out and then just making sure that I, you know, smooth it out nicely so that I don't have any wrinkles, um, you know, on the little birdies themselves. And once these are all dry, I will be trimming all of them. All I want from these uh, images is the little birdies and those two little flowers that are in the bottom. Um, I don't know what I did with two of the little flowers. I only found one. <laughs> I probably, they probably got um, tossed out when I was throwing out the little bit of the little pieces of trim. Um, but I was only able to save one, but it was okay because I used it on her hair um, later on. <laughs> and then I'm going to be using everything on this uh, napkin here. The, uh, two of the butterflies and both of the flowers I'm going to be using and I'm going to be doing the same technique of decoupaging it onto cardstock and this is great for creating your own ephemera this is great for creating your own sticker like um, you know your own sticker like embellishment um, if you have these kinds of napkins that have these beautiful beautiful images and you're kind of worried of adding the napkin down and the napkin tearing um, then by all means apply it to some cardstock um, you know, nice and gingerly, take your time, let it dry, and then you could just fuzzy cut around the images and um, it'll be easier for you to fuzzy cut around the images and lay them back down, you know, wherever it is you're trying to create, be it a card, or you're just trying to put some of them away for later use. Um, this is a great, a great way of storing them. And I like to do this quite often. <coughs> it's almost the same thing as printing them out and fuzzy cutting them, except that I know napkins can be a little bit more uh, you know, they could be a little bit more uh, easier to tear. So now everything has been dried and fuzzy cut it. I have my flowers, my butterflies, and my um, birds. And now it's time for me to figure out the layout. I did leave two butterflies there for later use um, to figure out, you know, for something else that I might like to do. So I wanted to create some tree stumps, but I didn't really like uh, the aesthetic of it after it was said and done. I really didn't like what it looked like. Um, and... <laughs> I wanted something that took more more uh, space on that page. I didn't want that page to just have these little tiny, um, you know, little tree stumps. So I opted actually for a larger tree that I will um, go ahead and hand cut, uh, you know, hand design and everything, and just kind of free, kind of free, um, free handed. I think that's what they call it. Kind of free handed and just um, design my own little tree. So this would have been okay, but some of the birds are not facing in the same direction. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that everything was, um, you know, good. <laughs> so here I'm just going with a regular ball, um, a regular ballpoint pen, um, and just kind of doodling a tree. You don't have to have any kind of expertise on creating trees. Uh, trees come in all different shapes, you guys. Um, some of them are broken down. Some of them are bent over. Some of them, you know, are this color, that color. There's really no rhyme or reason for the way the trees look. 
we have them in all shapes in all sizes and in all styles so anything 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 with little branches here and there pretty much is a tree <laughs> so and remember there is such a thing as called whimsical and uh that kind of allows you the freedom of just saying you know what this is just a whimsical tree so this is a whimsical tree you guys <laughs> And um, even though later on it looks a little bit more realistic, that happened by accident. Just so you know, it was not I was not planning it. Um, I just wanted to add a little bit of shading on it. And it actually ended up turning the whole tree into something that looked like uh, uh, one of those trees that, that are a little bit on the grayer tone. Um, and it looked really, really cool. So I was happy. Happy accidents. Um, those do happen. Um, and they are so fun. <laughs> so here I'm just adhering the little flower uh, to it because, again, She's like in this uh, mystical place, right, where the trees are humongous. Uh, they're almost as tall as the trees themselves. Everything in this place grows big as far as nature. We have humongous birds. We have humongous butterflies, um, you know, humongous flowers and trees. I mean, the tree's not that humongous, but it got chopped off. It would have been taller, but she's sitting on one piece of it, uh, if you notice later on. She's sitting on, uh, you know, the remainder of the trunk <laughs> that goes on the top, at least a piece of it anyway. Um, so... I always like to tell myself little stories, especially when the pictures are starting to come together. Then I, I try to give myself a little story of why things are the way they are. Um, I guess it's my way of making making sense of why my layout is what my layout is. Um, you don't necessarily have to do that. For me, it just makes it more fun because when I look at this page uh, in the future, I will always remember that she's sitting in this forest of humongous things and all those colors that you see in the background um, are pretty much uh, the energies that are generating, are producing all of these humongous uh, trees and flowers and birds and so on and so forth. So she's in this very mystical place, kind of like an Alice in Wonderland type of a situation. Um, so here, this is a Tim Holtz stamp and it's of a bird's nest. So I'm just going to stamp out two bird's nests, one on each side. Um, and then I'm going to proceed to stamp them out again on some scrap papers. And I'm going to, you know, do a little bit of fuzzy cutting um, and just get some of that you know, just the little center, which is pretty much what I need. Um, I'm going to go ahead and darken that up a little bit and just give it a little bit more life. And I'm going to stick that back down and I'm going to give these little birdies a place to sit and hang out and listen to the music while she plays. So you guys, I'm going to be starting uh, a mixed media. Well, that's, I mean, I guess it is mixed media in a way, but it's more art journaling. It's more geared towards art journaling, um, especially art journaling for like beginners. Um, in my style, everybody has their style, everybody has their way of doing things. Um, but I think you guys understand my lingo by now. <laughs> um, so for the most part, I figured I'd do a nice little, uh, you know, art journaling series for some of you guys. Um, I know I had this and that with Michelle ask me uh, the other day about, um, you know, breaking things down and, and uh, speaking about alternatives and things like that. So I am going to be... Uh, creating uh, a series is going to be going to go there's going to be uh, used for art journaling it's going to be for art journaling for beginners so i do hope that you guys will um you know for those of you that do want to learn um or they do want to play because this is really what it is if you guys want to play around in an old book um or you want to try different things you know or, or expand your crafty horizons um then i hope that you'll join me uh i think it's going to be a lot of fun i'm going to be showing you guys how to create your own gessos how to create your own matte mediums um, I'm also going to be going over just alternative products, uh, that I use, like the alternate for the gelatos, which are the gel sticks by Fabric Castell, which are exactly the same at a fraction of the cost. Um, and just different things that you can use, um, you know, like the coloring pencils that I use, which is another alternative to some of the more expensive ones. Um, but they color beautifully and they are at a fraction of a cost as well as, uh, you know, as well. Um, and just using different things, you know, uh, just creating different things in different ways um, and kind of helping you guys uh, to see it a little bit different and, and maybe not so daunting. Because um, I know for somebody who's looking from the outside of the box in, it looks really, really, really hard. But I think, um, you know, if you guys, uh, you know, more or less took a little bit of, of, of time in, in watching, uh, I guess, me break it down, um, you might be able to find that this is something that you really can uh, have a passion for. Um, and even if you don't share it with the world, it's definitely a good way for you to express how you feel um, or even incorporate it into like your art journaling, um, you know, your personal journals, uh, doodling in your personal journals and or your planners, um, you know, creating cards. Because these kinds of techniques can be used uh, pretty much across the board. If you guys see one thing about me is that 
even in the most simplest things like creating a card I incorporate mixed media I incorporate paint I incorporate all different kinds of things because once you have these skills in you it's kind of hard to shut them off once they're embedded they're embedded <laughs> so um, I'm hoping that by me kind of showing you guys kind of like my own personal process of it and how I go about doing certain things um, in a more structured kind of way um, that this will also kind of help you guys to just expand those crafty little wings and and just do all different kinds of projects now what you see me using here uh, because I kind of went ahead and skipped right over that these are the uh, Marco refined coloring pencils I absolutely love them they are the greatest for coloring they're so smooth I just love it love it love it anything that I don't have to fight with a lot I love <laughs> <coughs> Um, so yes, I'm going to be doing all different kinds of things. Um, so I do hope that you guys will, you know, sign up and, and, um, you know, join us and I'm going to be doing not, not necessarily a challenge, but I will be creating like little hashtags or, um, creating like a, a little list of inspirational kind of words and or quotes, um, that you guys, if you wish to can follow along and create your own art journaling, um, based on some of the things that you will be seeing and or learning, um, you know, through the series that I'm going to have. And, um, you know, for those of you that do end up really, really taking it serious and do participate all the way through and through, then I might just have a nice little surprise for one lucky person that actually, you know, shares their work and, or, um, you know, completes the whole thing and just, you know, comments and participates in the whole entire process. You might have something that'll help you actually continue your, your art journaling, um, journey. So, uh, a lot of fun things and hopefully you guys uh, see this as fun as well because I know I do I love it love it love it so I'm almost done with her and um, just adding the final little touches adding some yellows and some reds I'm um, not yellows yellows and some pinks um, and some oranges to those little flowers that she's got on the side there and she's almost done and I'm also gonna be going over coloring and just more or less how I color things um, so just you know kind of breaking down and and mind you I'm not somebody that has any kind of actual uh, I don't want to say knowledge because I do have knowledge but I didn't go to school for any of this um, a lot of these things that I do are very intuitive um, because I don't even know the words for you know for half of the stuff but hopefully I'll be able to show you guys and break it down to you guys in a way that you understand based on the way that I understand which are in very simple terms <laughs> So hopefully, um, you know, you guys will enjoy that. So I'm almost done with her. I've glued her down and I'm just going to decoupage her over just to make sure that she's nice and sealed. Um, and just adding a few little embellishments here and there, adding some foliage, uh, here and there. And, um, these are just some of the little pieces that I had left over. And the only thing that's left to do for me at this point in time, I believe is my sentiment as well as color in my tree. And for my sentiment, um, well, I'm adding a butterfly and I added a little flower as well. And I'm adding two little butterflies here onto this uh, page as well. And this was just a lot of fun. I really do love creating these kinds of pages. Um, they're very relaxing for me, just creating this whole new world and just making the story for it. Um, so I do hope that you guys are enjoying these kinds of videos that I'm putting out for you guys. Um, I do like to do paper crafting, don't get me wrong, but this is definitely my first love. <laughs> it's kind of hard, you know, uh, to balance myself out our craft and, and the crafting uh, world when it comes to, you know, the paper crafting side of me as well as the artistic side of me. Those two are always fighting for the, you know, for the, for the light, for the limelight, if you will. They're always fighting to be center stage. They're always fighting uh, to do things. Right now, as I'm talking to you guys, I'm thinking about five different projects that I got to do paper crafting wise. <laughs> this is just kind of what happens. Um, so my sentiment for this page is going to be sing for the birds. Um, and I, it just felt appropriate to me because she has a little flute in her hand. And even though she's not singing, she is creating song. Uh, she's creating music. She's creating melody, just like words do. Um, so I thought that this was appropriate for this page. And I'm just using this distressed uh, stamp set by Tim Holtz because it's the biggest stamp set that I have with uh, the biggest letters. Um, my, my goal now is to get myself one that is not distressed, like a regular font text. But I want it as big as these are. Just so that they can be nice and prominent when I do my art journal layouts. Um, but in the meanwhile, you guys will see this one, which works just as well. I just have to color it in, if anything, which is uh, what I do sometimes. 
so we are almost uh, getting towards the end of uh, this journal page um, and I'm, I hope that you guys have enjoyed it um, and like I said I hope that you guys will join me uh, for the uh, art journaling series that I'm gonna have and more than anything I hope that you guys give it a try and I, I do look forward to seeing um, some of your art projects some of your art journaling um, I love watching people just create art journal pages. I can spend hours and hours and hours on YouTube uh, just watching people art journaling. Um, it's just so relaxing, be it that I created or that somebody else creates it. I just love watching it. Uh, watching a page go from zero to 100 is just amazing. Um, and just because you never really know what the transformation is going to be like at the end, you, you think you know, but you really don't know until it's completely done. Things always are subject to change. See, I should have kept it as it was there. But I got fancy and started laying things out and then I ended up uh, taking some space from myself because I didn't measure properly as I was laying it out. So here I'm just laying the little butterfly and laying the big butterfly and then after my sentiment is done, I am going to be adding some shading uh, using uh, Memento Black as well as uh, the Fabricastel Pip Pen uh, in black. I'm um, just kind of smudging it around the edges. Here I'm also kind of gluing down the edges of my page only because they were curling in the ends and I didn't like that so much. I wanted them to be nice and stable, um, nice and flat. And as most of you guys know, I'm using a sketchbook for my art journal. Um, you know, so I didn't go ahead and buy myself a fancy kind of, you know, a mixed media book or a watercolor book. I have a watercolor one. Um, but I didn't want to use it for this because this is a lot of experimenting. So I didn't want to use my really, really good paper for it. <laughs> so I figured I'd use this, um, cause this is expendable. You, you won't feel so, so bad if you know, you mess something up in your sketchbook. Um, cause it's for sketching, it's for doodling, it's for doing those kinds of things, you know? So, um, so here I'm just going to add a little bit of shading. Like I said, I'm going to go into this. Um, I really don't like this, this, uh, gel pen. I need a good one. And I can't seem to find one. If any of you guys know what's a good brand for white gel pen um, and a good place to find it and or order it, please let me know down below because I have uh, tried to find some and I just, I can't, I can't find it. I don't know if it's just I'm looking for the wrong thing or if I'm putting in the name wrong or what. Um, but I need a good solid white gel pen. Um, those are definitely important in mixed media for highlights um, and just adding different little things. Um, you know that you want to stand out and this little gel pen is not doing it for me you guys <laughs> It's really not um, I was super excited when I first got it and then as time went on I was like, oh, I got a dud <laughs> Anyways, um, so I added some little details to her dress with uh, some little white dots here and there and just use a deco art pen to do that um, and just adding a little bit of uh, you know more color with the Fabricastel uh, pick pen in pink um, and now just adding a little bit of hot, you know, darkening some of the edges uh, with a black marker that has a nice little fine tip so I could get into all of those little edges um, and just trying to make certain little elements stand out more going around the whole, uh, you know, sentiment. And then I'm just going to shade in the tree with some black and I really do love how that tree came out. I really do love how that tree came out because it looks very bland there. But when I start adding the black memento ink on it, it looks wonderful, you guys. So I do hope uh, that you have enjoyed watching this process. Um, I hope that you guys have enjoyed watching all the videos that I have been putting out lately as far as, um, you know, our journey and stuff like that. I really do enjoy it. Um, and I love it when you love it. <laughs> so thank you all so much for your support. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Leave me in the feedback down below. If, uh, the art journaling series is something that you would uh, like to participate in. Um, and if, uh, there's anything in specific that you might need help with, or you are looking to find out more about so that I definitely make sure to focus in on some of those, those key areas. Um, that some of you guys might find a little bit on the difficult side. Um, and with that being said, you guys, thank you all so, so much for being here with me today. I so greatly, greatly appreciate it. I will have some pictures of this project, um, at the end of this video. If you want to see a little bit more close up, uh, then definitely hang out to the end. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and just give me a thumbs up because you think I'm awesome. Come on, you guys. Love is love, right? Remember? <laughs> well, thank you all so much and have an awesome, awesome day. And um, I look forward to uh, interacting with you guys. Bye.